<laughs> Hello, Lola's. What is good? <laughs> so I'm here with baby Phoebe, and I'm going to get her in some blue. I've been not putting her on any clothes. She's just been wearing her diaper. And uh, I, you know, with the softer babies, I think like sleepers and long pants and stuff like that is really nice on them because they're so cuddly. It gives them a little bit more even like control in those things. Um, but let me tell you something. When I pick her up and when I handle her, it's like... I don't know, like I just really feel the like a real baby like thing. What you want, girl? What you want? Mama need to clean your eyes. Um sometimes the baby's eyes get a little dusty like and you just take a Q tip and you know, do inside. Um What you doing? You're trying to get your fingers. <laughs> you're trying to you're trying to get your finger. She wrinkles up so nicely. Look at the wood, the wood. I I am so happy that I went back and added color to her because it really like completed her color and um She just say I'm just a special bug. Okay, so let's let's get you dressed. But you know, you can definitely like see how fluid she is. Like she is like the the say I'm like the bestest best. <laughs> I'm the bestest best. Is you Your legs going in crazy ways. I don't know. Like sometimes I can't see what you guys see. But yeah, if you um, I don't know. This I guess that's the thing about this the silicone. Like even just getting a baby that it may not be the most expensive silicone baby or the most perfect silicone baby, but if you just want the feel of a silicone baby and experience that I mean I totally understand that too because so the silicone does feel amazing like your rewards you can get them weighted and they can feel really nice but it's not the same as the the silicone you know it's a it's a different it's totally different so I don't know I just you know I think if someone can just experience it at least once. Oh, okay, big head girl. I love, I, I always love, I love the way that um, Claire sculpts heads. I love, always love her head shapes. Now look at your back piece of land. There you go. Um, so, like she does different shapes, but this shape head, I love the way the Willow's head is shaped. Um, the Andrew was another one that I really liked the way that the head was shaped. Um, Tate, another one I loved. Uh, trying to think, I don't know. So like a lot of them, they have this little egg shape. It's just. A very familiar shape hit um, for me with my real babies or with real babies in general um, so it's really nice I don't know I just I'm just a addict <laughs> I'm a doll addict I'm so happy right now. I am like building my my personal collection up 
the way I want it. I'm being very specific at this point. Um, for Christmas, I hope to bring home somebody's scope. I'm looking for me a preemie. I want to be able to paint it myself. And um, I don't know. I'm, I'm, you know, some of my babies I will share with you guys. Some of them I'll probably just kind of keep a little private. But um, I am working on, right now I'm not working on anything personal for myself because I have customs here. But um, I, I managed to finish up my custom, I mean my private baby, not private, my personal baby before some of my customs got here. Um, and I made sure that I allotted time for my personal baby, but I finished it just in time. So just in time for me to work on my customs because I don't want to take away time from somebody that's paying because I can work on my own stuff anytime. But um, I was talking to another um, artist friend and they were saying that they don't um, they don't get a chance to really finish their own stuff or work on you know babies that they've you know bought for themselves and you know sculpts that they've bought for themselves they haven't been able to really work on them because they're always doing work and I I hear a lot of artists saying that like they don't even have some collectors or well, artists say they don't even have any of their work in their collection I'm like you gotta be kidding me like I don't want to become that person I'm telling you I don't want to become that person this is my hobby and you know I started painting solely because I wanted to be able to make all the dolls that I wanted like I wanted to have unlimited access to kits you know I want to be able to just have to buy the kit and be able to paint it you know and I don't want to you know get to a point where I don't even get to paint for myself I mean that was the whole purpose so I will literally like say okay the month of August I'm not working on anything to sell or whatever if I have to just so I can you know do something for myself and you know because if it starts to feel too much like work work and not a hobby then you're not going to enjoy it and I I have to be able to enjoy what I'm doing um you know it's bad enough we have to go and clock in onto a job that you know you may or may not love I happen to like my job though um, maybe not everything about it, but I do happen to like my job. So that's a good, that is one good thing. But um, a lot of times we, we we're working on jobs that we don't necessarily love. And then to have what used to be our little outlet turn into work, mm, I not too much fun so I don't think I will I don't think that I will do that so this little outfit actually was sent to me um, as a gift for um, Taylor and I'm telling you guys I always I pretty much hold on to my gifts unless you know the person really like I don't know if if the person really does something horrible to me then I'll probably just donate it to a real baby or something like that I I don't hold it as a sentimental type thing but when you know people give me stuff otherwise I I try to always keep it so like I have stuff from the first the very first doll that I ever collected I have stuff clothes that I had for that doll I have clothes from the very first custom that I got that came in the box opening. Um, I have little stuff like that. 
that I never have gotten rid of. So, um, I'm a pretty, like, I guess, sentimental person. I'm very sensitive. Like, I still have a sweater in my closet from when I was in the um, eighth grade, I think, that came from Montgomery Award Awards. I think that was the name of it. Um, my grandmother was in New York and she was working and she had this credit card opened up and she gave me the credit card and she said, you know, go buy you a sweater because I used to always wear her sweaters because I used to like the Bill Cosby looking type sweaters and I used to wear them really big because I was really tiny and my grandmother's a plus size woman, but I would wear her sweaters all the time, like to school. And then I, she started buying me these sweaters and she was like, you know what, Montgomery Wars had those sw sweaters, like what I liked. And she said, go buy you a sweater. And I had the credit card. And at the time, she just gave me the credit card and I would pay it off because I was getting a check. I know all my business out here. I was getting a check because my father died when I was 13. And so I was getting a check and my mom never spent it. She just cashed and gave it to me. There you have it. Now you know my personal business. And, um... I would, I would, I was just, I would charge stuff, but I just had to pay the bill. But my grandmother, I think she sent me that sweater. She picked that, I think she picked that one out. I don't know. But anyway, it came from my grandmother. And I had these matching shoes that I wore. Oh my God, I wore those shoes so much. God, the things... They were really expensive shoes, so they didn't fall apart. It's just that I outgrew them eventually. I was so mad because I even wore them while my feet would hurt and I would have bunions after I wore them. I would still wear them. Anyway, but I still have that sweater. That was the point of this whole long drawn out story. Don't you hate when old people do that? Like They take you all the way around in the back just to get to a story. That The point is I still have my eighth grade sweater. And it is like got that yellowish tint to it now. But I still have it. I literally still have um stuff oh my god since forever i mean i i hold on to stuff so it's certain things that my grandmother bought me if my grandmother bought me something i probably still have it um because my grandmother is like amazing and um yeah so I'm a sentimental person, so if you send me something, I'm nine times out of ten, five years from now, ten years from now, I'm still gonna have it. I'm um, like you guys seen the other day. I had an outfit that Miss Patricia sent me for Lizzie, like however many years ago. I still have it. I still put it on my babies. Um, stuff from Jade, um, Serena. Um, Oh my gosh, I have stuff from every baby. I keep, and I might not keep every single thing, but there'll be like one special outfit that that was just so cute on that baby or that I really like, and I'll keep it. I don't know, do you guys like hold on to certain things? Like, you know, I know there's a, a big stigma about box openings, originals, and usually for whatever reason, it's mainly the Claire Teller dolls because Claire Teller box openings are so specific. Her additions is like, customized to that baby to that edition and every baby get the same thing pretty much in the edition unless I guess maybe I don't know if she does the same for bonus babies or stuff like that I don't know but you know what I mean like it's very specific all the way and so people want that all that stuff the originals but like regular reborns or you know just other babies that come you don't have to send the originals. It's not a thing that's frowned upon unless it was something specially made and custom made and unique to that baby. And it was a prototype baby. And, you know, and, and it was like, you know, something engraved or something. I don't know. But I feel like when I do a box opening secondhand, I feel like I should send new stuff because I feel like the mommy don't want the stuff that I already wore, the babies already wore because they're paying new money so they should get a new box opening. I don't know. So I always send new stuff and I keep the other stuff usually. I don't know. 
um and sometimes they get donated to other baby real babies and stuff like that but do you guys like when you resell a baby do you guys send everything that came in the original box opening plus new stuff or do you guys just send the stuff that came with the doll period that's it or do you guys just send new clothes like that i'm curious about that how do you guys do your resales with your box openings like um because i know big box openings are a really big thing for a lot of collectors not for me but for a lot of collectors it's a big thing it's a big thing for me when i'm paying over a certain amount of money i won't lie i feel like and i i know it's about the doll but sometimes I, I just i'm like send me a whole crib i want a crib i want a stroller i want a bassinet i want a rock and play like i want the whole nursery included in the price of this doll <laughs> no that's how i th used to think at first back in the day when i when i first started collecting and i wasn't buying on that that level I felt like that I was like, hell, if I spend that kind of money, they better be sending me the whole, look, I want a whole nursery. Like I want everything. I want customized bracelets. I want everything, like seriously. But I realized that we're actually paying for their skill, their art, the doll itself. And it's not about the accessories. Okay, kind of, sort of. I still kind of, sort of feel that way. But you know, I know it's not the right way of thinking. But anyway, guys, this video has been long as all my videos tend to be nowadays and i just want to know what your thoughts is on box openings um either comment or make another video okay bye